Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. The backstory on this beauty is pretty simple. It's been far too long since I've made a cardigan, and I wanted to make another one. It sports a front tie, which I haven't done on the channel in a little bit, and cute gator shaped buttons. But don't worry, they're faux, so no gators are harmed during the filming of this tutorial. Disclaimers aside, if you're feeling this cardigan like I'm feeling this cardigan, be sure to drop a comment and let me know how much. Now it's time for me to get back to work, so I'll catch you gators later. And without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 520 grams of yarn, plus 1,000 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6.5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, tape measure, and buttons. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Watch the end of the video to learn how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using two stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. And single crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and I explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this cardigan started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make our slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6.5mm hook and start off by making an even number chain from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the beginning of our side slit to start. Since this is going to get longer, the closer to the middle of our body we get. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 46, and that's 15 inches or 39 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to start working on our first moss stitch row. I'm going to start by blocking off our last chain and do a chain of one. This counts as our turning chain. Make a second chain, and this counts as an actual chain. From here, we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So count one, two, three, and then four. Insert your hook into that fourth chain with one single crochet. And then we have our first chain one space. Let's do the next one. Chain one, skip one chain, single crochet into the next. So insert your hook. Yarn over, pull through, we'll have two loops on our hook, yarn over, and pull through two. That is our second chain one space. Let's do just one more. Chain one, skip one chain, and then single crochet into the next. We're going to continue to chain one, skip a stitch, and single crochet into that next chain all the way until we reach the end of our chain. We made our way all the way down with our first moss stitch row. When we're working our way down towards our tail end, we're always going to increase, so let's do that together. Our last single crochet should have been into our last chain, so we're going to do another chain one, and then single crochet into that same last chain. So insert your hook with a single crochet. And for this sequence, we're going to be doing two moss stitch rows and one single crochet row. So to get started on our row number two for our next moss stitch row, we're always going to chain two. Flip your work, and then we're going to single crochet into that first chain one space. So this first one may be a little hard to see, but you're going to Insert your hook into that chain one space that we just did, so our increase from our previous row. And then we just made our first chain one space for our row number two. Let's do the next one together. Chain one into that next chain one space or that next big gap that we have. Insert your hook with a single crochet. Chain one, single crochet into that next gap. Continue to do this till we reach the end of our row. We've just finished our row number two, and our third row is going to be a single crochet row. So, to get that started, 
chain one, flip your work, and we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch and chain one space. So insert your hook into that first stitch with a single, also into that chain one space with one single. Continue to put one single crochet into every stitch and chain one space until we have one stitch left. Since we're working our way towards our tail end, we are going to meet each other back so that we can do an increase together. We are nearly done with our third row, which was our single crochet row. And into that last space that we have, we're going to do an increase of three single crochets. So insert your hook into your last stitch, which should be a chain one space, with one, into that same chain one space, two, and then with three single crochets. And like I said, we're gonna be doing two moss rows and a single crochet row. So let's get started on our next moss stitch row together. Chain two, flip your work, and we're gonna start by skipping that first stitch and then single crocheting into the next. Chain one, skip one stitch, and single crochet into the next. We're going to maintain this chain one, skip a stitch, and single crochet into that next stitch until we reach the end of our row. When we reach the end, do a chain up of two, flip our work, and then maintain our moss stitch rows, making our way back. And since we are working towards our tail end, don't forget to do an increase at the very end. And we're going to maintain these rows of two moss stitch rows and one single crochet row while increasing into every other row until this reaches the base of our neck. And I'll meet you back right after a single crochet row. I have just finished one of my front panels. I have a total of 24 rows and my width is seven inches or 18 centimeters. And the longest side of my front panel is 24 and a half inches or 62 centimeters. I'm now gonna make one more panel that is exactly the same. Now that we have our two front panels, we're gonna get started on the back and it's actually going to start the same as our front panels. So do the same chain, same amount of rows, and I'll meet you guys back when we have this portion all finished up. I now have the same amount of rows as my front panel. I want my back panel to be a little bit longer than the front, so I'm actually going to continue with the same amount of rows for another little bit until I get the length that I want my back panel to be. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm not gonna go past our mid back because we want it to scoop as well. So go ahead and continue these rows and I'll meet you back right after a single crochet row that ends along the top. All right, I now have the length that I want my back panel to be. The width is now a total of nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. And the length is 26 inches or 66 centimeters. From here, we're gonna continue with our sequence of two moss stitch rows and one single crochet row with no increases and no decreases until this reaches across our back, keeping in mind that we will have this same length mirrored on the other side as well. So I'll meet you back after a single crochet row that ends along the top. I have the width of my solid back panel finished. My total width is 13 inches or 33 centimeters and a total of 42 rows. We're now gonna do the same thing that we did on this side, but instead of increases, we're going to do decreases. So we're gonna start our next row, which is a moss stitch row, making our way all the way down, and I'll meet you back to show you how we're going to decrease. All right, so we have made our way all the way down with our first moss stitch row for the decrease side of our back panel. Working our way up towards the top is going to be where we start doing our decreases. So before we were increasing, going down, now we're going to decrease, working our way up. So after this first row, we're going to do a chain two and flip our work. From here, we're going to insert our hook into that first chain one space and then into the next for our decrease. So insert your hook into that first gap, yarn over, pull through. Also insert your hook into that next chain one space pull through, you should have one, two, three loops on our hook. From here we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. 
and then this is our chain one space. From here, continue per usual. So chain one, skip one into that next chain one space, single crochet, chain one into that next chain one space, single crochet. Continue to do this, making our way all the way up. And then for our next single crochet row, where we are working our way up, I'll meet you guys back just to show you how we're going to do our decrease of three single crochets and let you guys do the rest on your own. All right, so we have made our way all the way down with our first single crochet row for our decrease side. We're going to start working our way up towards the top. So we're going to do our first decrease of three single crochets. So we're going to start by doing a chain of two and flip our work. From here, we are going to skip that first stitch and then do a decrease of three single crochets into the second, third, and fourth stitch. So insert your hook into that second, you're gonna yarn over, pull through, third, yarn over, pull through, fourth, yarn over, pull through. We should have four loops on our hook. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through all four loops. This is our first chain one space, and we're going to maintain our moss stitch per usual from here. So chain one, skip one stitch, and single crochet. So after this, let's do one more decrease row. Make your way all the way to the end of this row, work your way back down, and I'll meet you guys back. And now, to do the last type of decrease that we're going to do, we're going to do a decrease of three for our single crochet row. So we just finished our second moss stitch row. Our next row is a single. So do a chain of one, and then we're going to start by inserting a hook into that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Insert your hook into that chain one space, pull through, and then also into that next stitch. Pull through. We should have one, two, three, and four loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through all four, and then since this is our single crochet row, Put one single crochet into every chain one space and stitch, making our way all the way down. And we're going to keep repeating these rows until we have the same amount of increase rows, but with decreases. And then I'll meet you guys back. Alright, so I have just finished the entirety of my back panel. I have 72 rows, and my total width is 21 and a half inches or 55 centimeters. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're going to single crochet around the entirety of our pieces. So we're going to get started on our front panel. So getting started on the front panel, we're first going to insert our hook into the corner stitch that is along the length of our front panel. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one, and we're going to work across the top first putting one single crochet into every side row. So let's do that first few together. This is my first side row right here. I'm gonna insert my hook with one single crochet. My next side row is this moss stitch row. So I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook. Then my next row is another moss stitch row. So I'm gonna insert my hook and single crochet. Continue to do this until we reach this corner over here. And now that we have reached this corner, we're going to single crochet across the side of our front panel. At this corner, we're going to chain one and then put one single crochet into every stitch. So into that first stitch that we have, I'm going to single crochet into that next stitch, single crochet. Continue to do this until we reach this bottom corner over here. Now that we have single crocheted all the way down, we are at our corner. We're going to put one single crochet into every side row going into our slant. We're not going to do anything into this corner, so just find that first side row. Insert your hook with a single crochet. Continue to do this until we reach this point right here. Now that we have reached this corner, we want this corner to maintain as a point. So into that first stitch that we have working along the length, we're going to do an increase of three single crochets. So insert with one into that same stitch, two, same stitch again, with three. And then put one single crochet into every stitch, slip stitch into that chain one space, do a chain up of one and cut. And then do the same thing that we did here for this front panel on our other front panel. 
Now that we have Simone crocheted along both of our front panels, we're going to do the same thing for our back panel. So just to get that started with you guys, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of our back panel, put one single crochet into every side row, making our way across to this corner. When we reach this corner, just like how I did for the front panel, chain one, and then single crochet into every stitch. Along the bottom, we want it all to curve, so just continue to put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up and around. Slip stitch into this chain one space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. Now that we've single crocheted along both the front and the back panel, what we are going to do now is seam our shoulder. While we're placing our front panel on top of our back panel, we want to make sure that the long side of our front panel is faced inward. So the curve of the back panel and the curve of the front panel is going in the same direction. We're then going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of the front panel and also into the corner stitch of the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're going to single crochet, making sure we're going in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So insert your hook into that next available stitch into the front panel and then into that next available stitch into the back panel and then we're going to single crochet. Let's do the next one. Into that next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel and then single crochet. Continue to do this making our way all the way down. We don't have any more stitches left into our front panel, do a chain up one and cut, and then do the same thing that we did here on the other side with our other front panel. Now that we have both of our shoulders seamed, we're now going to seam our underarm. We're going to try on our piece and insert our stitch markers into an even numbered stitch where we want our armhole to be. I inserted mine into the 18th stitch from the top, and that's six inches or 15 centimeters, and we do want to make sure we have the same amount of stitches along the front panel, and the back panel. From here, I'm going to insert my hook into that next stitch, working our way down. Insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And the seam is going to be a single crochet seam, just like our shoulder, so let's just do the first one together. Insert your hook into that next available stitch into the front panel, then also into that next stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet and single crochet all the way down until we reach this corner, do a chain up of one and cut, and then do the same thing that we did here on the other side. Now that we have finished seaming up both of our sides, we're going to single crochet around the entirety of our piece. So we're gonna start by inserting our hook into any one of the stitches that we have along the back. I'm gonna insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, I'm going to put one single crochet into every stitch, making my way all the way down, and I will meet you guys back along this bottom corner so that we can maintain this point. And now that we've reached this corner, into this corner stitch, we're going to do an increase of three single crochets. So insert with one, insert with two, and then insert with three single crochets. From here, we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way along the bottom until we reach this corner again. Do another increase of three, and then single crochet all the way up and slip stitch into that chain one space that we started off with. And now that we've made our way around with our first single crochet row, we're going to do one more single crochet row. So after our slip stitch, we're going to chain one, and then working in the same direction, one single crochet into every stitch while maintaining the increase of three into our front panel corners. I'll meet you back when the second row's done. All right, so I am back and I have just finished my second single crochet row. We're about to get started on our third, but this is gonna be the row where we start our slits for our buttons. So go ahead and insert your buttons wherever you want them to be placed. I place my first one right where the middle of my chest is. And then from there, I place the next one about four inches or 10 centimeters under that. And then same for the one that's underneath there. That's about 12 stitches in between each of my three buttons that I have. 
And from here, I'm going to continue with the same thing that I was doing before. So single crochet into every stitch while increasing into the bottom corner of our front panel. And then I will meet you back when we reach our first button. All right, so I've done my single crochet row all the way around until I reached my first button. Now this part is going to depend on how big your buttons are since mine is a smaller one and it can fit through just one chain. Once when I get to this point, I'm going to chain one, skip that stitch that my button is fastened into, and then single crochet into the next. And just to show you guys, we can actually take this out now. The button that I have can fit in through that chain one space that we just made. So if you have a bigger button, go ahead and make two chains, skip two stitches, and so on and so forth until you guys get the desired size that you guys need. I'm going to do that for every button that I have, and then close this row off the same way that we've been doing, single crocheting into every stitch and slip stitching into that chain one space. All right, now that I have single crocheted along everything for this previous row, we're now going to insert our buttons into the opposite side of our slit. So what we're going to do is insert our stitch markers into the same stitches that we have for our slit, and then all we're going to do is tie in our buttons. So I've already done the first two. I'm just going to show you guys how to do my next one. I'm going to insert my shank button into the stitch that I have that's right next to my stitch marker. And then from here, I'm going to take either a tapestry needle, or in my case, a smaller crochet hook. I'm going to insert it into the body of the piece, into the hole for the shank button, and then through the other side as well, just to make sure that it's nice and secure. I'm going to take some scrap yarn, insert that onto my hook, pull that through, I hang on to one end and pull it all the way through. And then from here, securely tie it, and we are all done. Go ahead and do that for every button that we have. All right, and now that we have added in our buttons, we have one more single crochet row to do. So do everything the same that we've been doing. Slip stitch into that chain one space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so now that we are finished with our border, we're now gonna get started on our sleeve. We're gonna start by inserting a hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam. Insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. For this first row, we're going to do a row of single crochet, just putting one single crochet into every stitch. Just to do the first one together, insert your hook into that first stitch, and single crochet. Keep putting one single crochet into every stitch, slip stitch into that chain one space, and then I'll meet you guys back. We've just finished our first single crochet row, and we're going to follow the same stitch sequence as the body. So chain two, flip your work, and then do a row of moss stitches. Slip stitch into that chain one space, chain two, Flip your work, and then another row of moss stitches, and then a single crochet row. We're going to repeat our two moss stitch rows and one single crochet row sequence until we are ready to get started on our seventh row, which should be a single crochet row, so I can show you guys how we're going to decrease. So we've just finished our two sets of single crochet and two moss stitch rows. We should have a total of six rows right here and getting started with our seventh we're going to do a decrease. To get that started, we're going to chain one, flip your work, mine is already flipped, and we're going to start with a decrease of two single crochets. So insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through also into that next stitch, which should be a chain one space, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then from here, we're going to put one single crochet into every chain one space, and stitch until we reach the opposite side of our sleeve and then we're going to do a decrease along this outside. And now that we've put one single crochet into every stitch, we are now along the outside. So we're going to do another decrease of two single crochets. So start by inserting your hook into that next stitch, pull through into that next stitch, pull through. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And to close off this decrease row, continue to put one single crochet into every stitch. Slip stitch into that chain one space, 
chain two, flip your work, and then continue with our moss stitch row. We're going to be doing a decrease into every other single crochet row, making our way all the way down until we're ready to do our cuff. I'm going to get my sleeve done, and then I will meet you guys back to let you guys know how many rows and the length that I have as well. I now have the length of my sleeve all finished. I have a total of 40 rows, and this is 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And from here, we're going to start working on our cuff. I'm going to start by making a chain the length that I want my cuff to be. So I want mine to be about two and a half inches or six centimeters. So I'm going to make a chain of 10. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain to a chain of a one and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do one more. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've made our way all the way down our chain, we're now going to close off this first row by slip stitching into that next available stitch into the base. So into that next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything to close this off and to work our way up to the next row. Going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do one more. Into that next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the end, do a chain up of one, flip your work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. Connect it into the base the same way that we just did, and I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left to seam our cuff. We've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to go into, so now we're going to seam our cuff. We're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam, so we're first going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. And then we're going to insert our hook into our back panel's corner stitch. Yarn over and pull through everything. Into the first stitch that we have into the front panel, we're going to insert our hook into that front loop or the loop that's closest to us. And then into the back panel, we're going to insert our hook into that next stitch's back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. We should have three loops on our hook. So from here, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do one more. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook into that front loop. And then into that next stitch into your back panel, insert into that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything. Continue to do this, working our way all the way down where we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up of one and cut and then do the same thing that we did here on this side, on the other side. We have just finished doing both of our sleeves and we are all done. The last thing we have to do is weave in all of our ends. Our ends are woven in and our cardigan with buttons is all finished. This cardigan is light and airy, making it great for the springtime. And I know you guys are gonna make this in the cutest colors, so don't forget to tag us on Instagram so we can show you guys to our highlights. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us the last thing you ate. Good luck to everyone who enters. Also, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up because believe it or not, it actually helps. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Those links are down below. Link to our Etsy page is down there too if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel. Be sure to favorite the shop so you don't miss out on new patterns and exclusive deals. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.